This video is sponsored by Flashforge. A while ago, Flashforge sent me their new Finder 3. A 3D printer in the entry to mid-range segment. As I have used the old Finder to make all my previous models, from the small ones, to the slightly bigger, to the biggest. I was very intrigued to see what the difference were compared to the old printer. Some things stand out immediately. The new Finder 3 has a larger build area compared to the old Finder. Although the old Finder is small, it is still possible to make a lot of cool stuff with it. The advantages of a bigger build area is of course huge. The old Finder is a cheap and easy to use printer for beginners. It lacks a heated bed, something the new Finder 3 has. This makes it easier for the filament to stick to the build plate, since the heat prevents the material from shrinking. Even easy to print materials like PLA does shrink a tiny bit and can warp when you are printing large flat objects like road wheels. The build surfaces that comes with the printer is a steel surface that is easy to bend to remove your print, a magnet platform sticker and a glass plate. The old Finder was first and foremost a PLA machine, but I have printed PTG on it as well. With the heated bed, the new Finder 3 can make use of a wide range of materials such as ABS and ASA. The boxer shape should make it easy to encapsulate the printer to maintain heat inside and also to prevent fumes from ABS from spreading in the room. The nozzle on the Finder 3 works up to 260 degrees Celsius compared to 240 degrees Celsius on the old Finder. Finder 3 has a power loss recovery function which allows you to continue a build if something happens and the power cuts off. It is also equipped with a filament reminder sensor that pauses the print if the printer runs out of filament. Note that if the end of the filament is bent when leaving the filament spool, the filament tip might get stuck anyway. The Finder 3 has a filament holder placed on the back. This is new compared to the old Finder, which had a filament cassette built into the design. While the idea was good and made for a clean look, I have experienced the filament getting stuck in the cassette. That's why I'm using a small tripod for a separate filament spool, just as the new Finder 3 has. This also allows me to use all kinds of filament brands. I think this is a good example of making the printer a bit easier to use and less complicated. The Finder 3 comes fully assembled in a rigid, boxy shape, just as its predecessor. It has a similar design as the old Finder, but updated and thinner. Despite the larger build area, the printer is actually smaller in size compared to the old Finder, except for the height, it's a little bit taller than the old Finder. Personally, I really like the look of the printer, which is futuristic and friendly at the same time. The printer has a build surface that moves vertically along a threaded rod. The printer head moves horizontally along two metal rods and is driven by belts and step motors. Contrary to the first finder, the metal rods are mounted vertically, instead of laying flat. This makes the printer head a bit flimsier in my book, but does not seem to affect the printing quality. The new Finder 3 is powered on by flicking the switch on the back of the printer. This is the only way to start or turn off the printer. The old Finder also had a switch on the back, but it also had a power button on the front. The Finder 3 lacks this dedicated on button. More on this later. The old Finder has a leveling system based on a sensor that flips down when leveling the build surface. This is a nice feature, but unfortunately the level sensor is somewhat exposed and in the risk of being damaged in case of something happens with the print. You can adjust the retraction of the sensor, but as you can see on my old Finder, the tip of the level sensor has broken off during an accident. 
The Finder 3 does not have a leveling sensor, which is just as well since this eliminates a sensitive component. Instead, the Finder 3 is easily leveled in three points with two wheels similar to the old Finder, plus one digital adjuster. Start with adjusting the bed vertically and then move on to the two adjustment wheels. I find this method to be almost as good as leveling the old finder, but without the sensitive sensor. The old finder has a glass plate with a build tag on in a plastic frame that can be removed from the printer. Due to the heated bed, the bed plate on the Finder 3 is different. It is easy to remove the surface and the filament sticks to it. The Finder 3 has built-in Wi-Fi and software updates are done over the air. With FlashForge Slicer Flash Print, files could be sent directly to the printer. It is also possible to use a USB stick to transfer the files. Just as for the old Finder, the Finder 3 comes with a set of tools that is very handy for working and maintaining the printer. Among the tools, a glue stick is included. This is to increase the adhesion even more. The printing quality of the Finder 3 is great out of the box and in level with my experience with the old Finder. Here is a test print showing Benchy. Benchy is a commonly used model for testing the printer's resolution and ability to print overhang without support materials. As you can see, it's a pretty good little Benchy. It does struggle a bit with the tiny letters on the stern of the Benchy, but the lines and surfaces look good and this is not a resin printer. Overall, the printer has performed excellently and delivered lots of parts for future projects. After using my old Finder for nearly 6000 hours, there are a few things I wish that the Finder 3 would have copied from the old model. For instance, I would like to be able to see the complete name of the 3D file I intend to print. This is especially important if you have different versions of a file. The old finder shows the entire file name, which the new one does not. I would guess that this is easily fixed with a software update, so FlashForge, this is a tip for you. The second thing I miss on the Finder 3 is the lighting. The old finder had pretty good light in the form of an LED ramp along the inner side of the printer, while the Finder 3 only has one light source located in the printer head. It's doing an okay job, but does not cover the print very well, especially early in the print when the light is close to the build surface. A couple of LED strips would be good here. The third thing I would like to have on the Finder 3 is the automatic turn off function. This is a very useful function that lets the printer turn off automatically when the print is finished. This is especially useful when doing a longer print. In this way, the printer won't be left on standby during the night, for example. With that said, you should never leave your printer unattended. The lack of a dedicated on button might have something to do with the Finder 3 not having this function. So with that said, would I recommend the Finder 3? Absolutely. It's a great printer in a stable and nicely designed package that are easy to use. I have used the printer extensively and has clocked 600 hours by now. The larger build volume has been great when making larger pieces for my current tank project the Stritzwang 105 or Centurion. Compared to the old Finder, a bit of complexity has been removed, at the same time as the heated bed and warmer nozzle makes the printer more versatile. I have some suggestions to FlashForge regarding lighting and software that could make the machine even better, but other than that, the printer performs very well and has made my hobby a little easier. In the future, I will experiment more with different types of material like ASA, an UV resistant version of ABS that might be a good option for 3D printed tanks. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the Finder 3. The printer has been working hard since I got it and a lot of new projects are on their way. 
Thank you for watching, comment if you want to know more, and don't forget to check out Finder3 on Flashforge webpage. Link is down here. Take care, and I'll see you next time.